Hey everyone, Felipe here. Welcome to another Tower of Saviors video. In this video, I'll be doing another blind GNN news review. And this time we're going to have Apokalimon for Ultimate Descent. So this looks like it's gonna be the final boss from the movie, which tells me maybe there is going to be Omnimon for sure, because uh, for those that haven't watched Digimon, this is the movie where um, Wargreymon and Metal Garurumon ended up fusing for the first time and creating Omnimon. Uh, actually, it was a movie. I think it was a movie. But basically, this is going to be the final boss that they fought, and this makes me think that we are going to have a combination between the two power releases but we'll have to wait to see until the uh, announcement comes up for now let's take a look at the news themselves we're going to have okay apokalimon ultimate descent uh maybe it's going to be a ultimate stage we have a virtual rebirth for Vimon and Wormon. That, that one we knew because we knew about Pile Dramon and uh, Imperial Dramon. I mean, Imperial Dramon and Dragon Mode and Fighter Mode. It will require a Dolan of Dragons, which is a little bit rough. Uh, seems like everything is requiring a Dolans nowadays, which I haven't. I don't have that many in my account, anyways. But yeah, let's take a look at Imperial Dramon Leader Skill. So Digi Destin, Beast, Elves, and Dragons, Attack times 8, HP and Recovery times 2.2, Damage received minus 40%, and when 6 or more combos are made, Team Attack times 6. That's actually not bad for a leader skill, and we also have a, a team skill, so this might be a good leader card, especially because it is free to play. So let's see, we do get Digivice, or V3 Digivice, which is about the same thing. Um, yeah, D3 Digivice, which is basically the same. For every 10 runes dissolved in the first batch, uh, sniper damage of 1 million to all enemies. Mm, to the max of 4 million for more than 40 runes dissolved in the first batch. I guess if you have the skill with the 3 rows on the top, that might work. Um... But otherwise, you are looking at a 2 million at most. Because clearing 30 means a full board clear. And that is less common um, than clearing like 20 or 10. So, okay. Not bad. Extra damage. 1% uh, of the above damage dealt will be recovered to HP recovery. So, as long as you are able to deal this damage to the enemy, you'll be able to recover. Let's see if... Uh, 40, so that's like 40,000, which is not bad because a lot of teams are running like 20,000, 30,000. But nowadays, like, especially for dragon teams, uh, for Imperial Dramon, having a 2.2 HP multiplier on his leader skill, you're going to be looking at around 90,000. So, uh, actually, that's 4 million. So, 10,000. Um, if you only do 10 runes though. So that's going to be nice HP recovery, but it's not going to be super significant um, based on your total amount of HP. But it is still very good to have. Um, I still think being able to recover HP without having to dissolve hard runes is going to be really beneficial. So this is going to be a good um, amount of HP recovery. The damage itself, not that significant. Snipers are very situational and even then the damage is only used to remove stealth shields just because a lot of the enemies has way too big of an hp pool so like 1 million is not gonna deal anything 4 million is also not gonna deal that much and you're not gonna kill an enemy with that so even with tumblr even enemies that have tumblr it used to be that their biggest weakness was snipers because you could deal more than the tumbler amount but nowadays tumbler uh, enemies already have like a billion hp or four billion hp so a 25 percent tumbler gives them a billion hp so a million against that billion yeah not really that um useful or it won't really make a dent i guess your main utility is going to be for the hp recovery uh, for every enemy defeated, HP recovered by 50%. Not bad. 
um, still situational. If the enemy is attacking you real hard, you want to recover HP um, during the round as well. So it is good for survivability, especially since I don't think he has any extra recovery. Oh no, he does have recovery. Um, still pretty nice. Um, but I mean, still good. By dissolving 20 or more runestones, team attack increases by 3 times. Uh, Dragon Moan launches 3 extra attacks, and damage will be dealt regardless of combo shield. 20 runes is not bad. It is still going to be a little bit hard. Uh, if you dissolve 3 groups of 3, that is a 7 combo. Which, my average is usually 6. So, 7 is a little bit above average. But if you're able to do six with like a group of five or a group of or two groups of four, that is still okay. That is to say, this is not too bad. It is going to be required for you to launch your maximum damage output with a times three. But all in all, not a hard condition to meet, uh, except if you encounter really annoying um, enemy skills. And let's see, all runestones also possess the effect of water, earth, and light runes, meaning that you wanna. Potentially run only water, earth, and light members in your team to get the much as much damage as possible uh, for your attacking runes. Uh, let's see. All in all, uh, he's a. Actually, if you do get more than six combos, team attack times six, uh, which is not bad. So you get a times eight, times six, and your your uh, team skill condition is leader is Imperial German and allies a Digi Destin. So that's not bad. You could pair him up with Kari or Magna Angemon. And it's gonna be pretty good, especially because this is a light dragon card. Uh, but yeah, overall damage output is not bad. Times eight, times six, and then additional times three. Not bad, but I think his damage is going to be a little bit on the lower side. Um, but honestly, this is not bad, especially for a free-to-play card. So if you don't know, you can get a lot of copies of Vimon through logging in, Arena, through chain battles, and through some of the special achievements on the bottom left of the screen. And because of that, you're going to be able to get um, a free copy of Vimon and Warmon, which means that you are able to get a free copy of Imperial Dramon Dragon Mode as, as long as you get the evolved materials and whether you want to have it a at full skill level that is another story because you do get a lot of copies and we will get enough copies to uh, dual max one Vimon. but for all of the other ones you will probably have to harpy or find other ways of getting Vmons and warmons like through gift packs and stuff but that is locked uh, behind the paywall so i don't know if a lot of you will do that but if you do have that you would do get a free dual max copy of vmon through the gift pack except if you don't want to spend real life money on it then we are getting a dual max through all the free copies but for all other ones we will have to spend harpies on them uh, but yeah, so as a leader, I think Dragon Mode is not bad. He does have a good damage. I think his weaknesses are going to be breaking enemy shields. You do get to break fixed combo shield, but everything else is not... Um, uh, you have to deal with it yourself. So any and all board hazards, so sticky, fire, or burning, electrified, weathered, all those. Initial shield, puzzle shield, um, equal combo shield, quintet shield, enchanted shield. Those are all going to be up to you to break using your members or your spinning skills. And because of that, it is going to be a little bit harder to bring this card as a leader for higher um, level stages. But it is still going to be possible depending on your members that you bring. The fact that you are able to bring Digidestin, Beasts, Elf, and Dragons gives you a lot of utility because a lot of beasts, elves, and dragons have a lot of utility They can help you counter these um, these boards. For example, you can bring um, Javanor, you can bring, um, or Fire Javanor, you can bring um, Kehuan, Bahamut, uh, if you need a time tunnel, you can bring um, Sora, Daji, Beasts, you can bring, uh, I don't know, um, 
Victoria uh, for Puzzle Shield, things like that. So, in terms of members, he has a lot of flexibility for team building, except uh, because of that, most of your team building is going to be focused on countering enemy skills since um, your team skills and leader skills don't have that much in terms of dealing with enemy attacks. Uh, however, the fact that you do have a damage reduction is nice, but a lot of hard-hitting enemies have Phantom or Defense Brick, which, I mean, it will help you survive in certain scenarios, but um, it is less useful than it used to be in the past, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah. Uh, in terms of team building, I do recommend building him dual leader and ally, or bringing Kari and uh, Magna Angemon and Angewomon, because they also have a damage reduction, and also pretty good um, passive team skills and active skills. So bring them over, and then that's good. Or just put them in your team, and that's also going to be pretty good as well. Uh, but yeah. Let's take a look at his active skill. We have um, CD8 active skill. Explore all runestones to generate um, water, fire, earth, light, dark, and heart enchanted runes of fixed numbers at fixed positions, which actually not bad. Uh, actually, that's pretty good. Honestly, fix exploding all runes to generate a fixed board is always pretty nice because this is going to give you less you, you require less brain power to spin, and it is going to make it easier for you to spin. And you already know how the board is formed, so you can also get easy equal combo shields, you can get number shields easily, and things like that. So that is going to be pretty nice. For one round, by dissolving all runes in the first patch, character's attack increases by 3 times, and skill reduces by 2 at the end of the round. Actually. Not bad, especially because if you get fixed numbers and fixed positions for all runes, that guarantees a full board clear, which basically guarantees 8x3 team attack. Or character's attack. Yeah, actually, that's, that's less good. Hmm. I mean, the good thing about this is that it guarantees your team attack up here of dissolving 20 runes. The character's attack, I mean, it's not bad. 8x3 character attack is not bad, except it would have been better if you got a team attack bonus, but eh, still something. And minus 2 CD, it's nice, but it's not gonna do much because this is CD8. Uh, so that's going to bring you down to CD6. Eh, still, it, it will allow you to reactivate it faster, but it's still not that significant of a cooldown reduction. Um, but yeah, it's not bad. I mean, it's a nice bonus, but I wouldn't count on it as a good thing. Um, if anything, it is good for longer stages where you know you're going to have like 20 plus rounds, uh, 18 plus rounds, things like that. Because that means you can activate it more. But typically, in stages nowadays, unless really necessary, you're activating skills like once every battle because you're able to just like heal everything really fast and then activate the skill at the place you need it um so very rarely except for like javanor iron fan princess i mean fire javanor iron fan princess low cooldown enemies you're activating your skill like once or twice even uh, but yeah uh cd minus two especially for a cd eight Eh, it's not that impressive, in my opinion. Still a good skill though. Exploding all runes to generate uh, water, or like fixed numbers, fixed positions of everything. It's nice, and then it helps you satisfy your team skill, but also um, helps you satisfy this uh, second effect on his leader skill. In terms of, oh, we have, okay, now we have fighter mode. I thought it was going to be another skill, but that means that let's review Dragon Mode first. So in terms of a member, I think Dragon Mode is just okay. Um, and the reason being is like, yes, his active skill is pretty useful. It does give you good utility in terms of generating enchanted runes of all types at fixed numbers and fixed positions, which is pretty useful in terms of the current meta or like current enemy meta. 
because enemies have uh, not only do you generate enchanted runes of every attribute which can help you break quintet elemental shield but it can also help you break fixed or full board shields which are increasingly more common nowadays and pretty annoying to deal with but you can also deal with equal combo shield really easily because it generates one combo of each i think uh, but yeah basically equal combo shields for any uh, combination will uh, get countered and you can also basically just uh, clear the entire board so it's not a bad skill it's just cd8 is a little bit long for this type of skill um, especially in the current meta of things cd8 is pretty long uh, especially because you do need it at dual max for it to get that low and light cards actually have a lot of utility already. Um, so, mm, however, light dragons don't really have this type of utility yet. So, in terms of a light dragon skill, this is pretty good. Uh, but for light members in general, there could be other alternatives uh, to dragon mode. Uh, but CD8. It might still be useful in light dragon teams if you need this type of utility or actually in any dragon team so that's still pretty good as a member as a leader i do think he is a pretty good leader especially for a free to play but definitely not top of meta maybe like high tier not s tier like a like lower a tier i guess uh, which is not bad especially for a free to play car uh, just because he does have the damage or he has he has nice damage multipliers times eight times six uh but if you're not able to satisfy his conditions then his damage is going to be pretty pretty underwhelming and you also don't have that much utility built into your team skill and so dragon mode as a leader is okay but not super broken or super good just okay Okay, so now let's move over to the next part of news, which is Imperial Dramon Fighter Mode. Um, so, DJ Destin- Oh, actually... Wait, wait, this is not bad. DJ Destin, Water, Earth, and Light members. Attack times 9, HP and Recovery 1.6. Dissolving 3 types of runestones, team attack times 6 additionally. And combo count and EX combo count increases by 3 times, uh, plus 3. Actually, this is so much better. This is so much better. Wow. I mean, it makes sense. Uh, this guy was like... The the fighter mode was the second stage of Imperial Dramon Dragon Mode, so... Ah, not bad. Not bad, not bad. Uh, the only thing that's concerning me is that we're go getting to the times 9 attack. Uh, and that's like annoying because power creep. But anyways, times 9 attack for your team, which is on the higher end, which is pretty good. Uh, higher end of the meta. HP and recovery times 1.6. A little bit lower, so you are trading a little bit of HP and recovery compared to dragon mode for more attack. But I think that's fine. Especially your second effect is going to be an easier to hit condition. Three types of runestones. This is at the very worst, like a three combo. Uh, and it doesn't have to be attributive, so heart runes also count. So it's actually a pretty easy condition to hit. Team attack time 6, basically free team attack time 6 and free combo counts. So honestly, not bad. Also, not it's not uh, first batch only. So it's pretty good, pretty good. Now let's take a look at the team skill. We have Digivice, uh, Digivice, okay, leader is Imperial Drama Fighter Mode and Digi Destined Member. Extra 3 runes to movement time. If you dissolve Light Runes, team attack times 3. And Imperial Drama additional team attack times 3. And damage will be dealt regardless of initial shield. All runestones possess the effect of Water, Earth, Light, and Heart Runes. So honestly, mm, pretty simple team skill, uh, but actually not that bad. Uh, team attack times 3 is pretty good for dissolving for your condition to just be dissolving light runes. Not first batch, so you can still stack runes and stuff. 
you are countered a little bit by light block but other than that i think you're fine um but you are going to be relying a lot on light room and i think my oh, jesus i think hold on give me a second uh some there's there's some kids outside that are like annoying uh but yeah uh, three extra seconds movement time, not bad. Um, dissolving light runes is going to be your bread and butter. So no matter what you do in every board, you even if you possess the effect of water, earth, light, and heart for all rune stones, and you have attacking runes, no matter what, you still want to aim to get light runes in order to reach your maximum damage potential. Uh, because this is only a times eight or times nine times six, if you add on this times three, your damage is going to be pretty nice. Uh, if not, your damage is just going to be okay. So this card as a leader will basically rely on you dissolving light runes in order to be like um, max potential. Which shouldn't be too hard unless you have light block. Which it seems like it's a common theme between the DG Destined where if you block their element, they're useless. <laughs> For example, for Tai, if you block fire, he's useless. For Matt, if you block water, he's useless. And for Kari and Takeru, if you block hearts and light, you're also useless. So, uh, seems to be a theme. But um, yeah, for this guy, I think as a leader, he is going to be better than Dragon Mode just because of the easier conditions. And I also think ignoring initial combo, I mean, initial shield, is um, easier to break, uh, is more useful than fixed combo shield. So this is also a better shield break, uh, in my opinion. And this is because uh, for initial shield, you can only break it through skills or through craft. For fixed combo shield, if you are really good at spinning, you are able to break it with just a hand spin because you just need to hit that combo. And unless it's like a 10 combo where you don't have the required runes for it then um, it should be still pretty doable so i do think breaking initial shield is more utility than breaking uh, fixed combo shield so i do think imperial drum on fighter mode is going to be a better leader um and yeah but still not super like meta defining like it's a good leader, but like maybe here a little bit above dragon mode, uh, but definitely not super broken. It will help you clear some endgame content, keyword some, but not uh, not like nightmare stages and super uh, like hard stages. Because again, this is just a free to play card and usually free to play cards will not be super powerful. It's still usable, but they're not going to be like as useful as like jackpot cards, in my opinion. The only exception might have been Ultimate Armor X, but that was like so long ago. And I do think this is um, this is not a bad leader. It's just um, it will be outplayed by a lot of the other meta teams in the game, like Black Gold cards, current jackpot cards and future releases as well. Uh, but yeah, now let's take a look at his active skill. Uh, we have Imperial Dramon, Giga Death, CD8. Oh, explode water, fire, and earth to generate light, enchanted light, enchanted dark, and enchanted heart runes. For one round, the character's attack increases by eight. Okay. Um, okay, so first things, characters attack times 8, super nice, uh, Jesus, what the, well, anyways, characters attack times 8 is super nice, and definitely a good thing to have, because that's like a very big burst attack. The first one... Actually, you know what? The first one's not bad. Like like I said before, 
your goal is to break is to dissolve light runes so the fact that you're generating light runes is already pretty good the fact that everything already possesses the effect of water earth and light runes light and heart runes is also not bad because even if you explode away water and earth runes you're still getting the effect of those so basically this is going to be a pretty useful skill to explode these three types of runes um however cd8 for just that is kind of disappointing um for example this is like a guan yu uh guan yu skill or like a cheshire skill and they are at like cd6 uh cheshire is at cd4 actually uh and guan yu is at cd6 so cd8 for exploding three types is actually pretty long and eh, not that great however I do think exploding three types of runes to generate the other three is pretty useful because it helps you uh, filter out your board and make it easier to spin combos. Uh, so for example, if you have sticky or if you have burn or you have weather runes, being able to explode these runes will give you more chance to like spin better even with those board hazards active. And you also get a times eight attack, which is going to be pretty nice uh, especially uh, for Imperial Dramon, if you're able to uh, hit the conditions here, uh, your leader is going to, or your character is going to launch a very, very powerful attack. As a member though, I think the cooldown is way too slow for to run him as a member. Um, because this utility you can get from something else, and the attack bonus, you can probably get yourself a team buffer instead and so in the future it might see some play but i do think cd8 is quite long for him which means that there are better cards uh, for options as a member especially nowadays where each member slot is very very valuable so yeah uh now so as a whole i think he is not a bad card i think uh, he will be able to, um, yeah, he is going to be a good member, or a good leader, sorry. And an okay member, but I do think there's better options. But I do think uh, Fighter Mode is a better leader than uh, Dragon Mode because of higher attack multipliers, um, easier conditions, and better like shield breaks. Again, he does suffer from the same weakness where you don't really have any board hazard uh, team skills or you also don't have any other shield breaking. So a lot of your team will be focused on um, breaking those utility or satisfying that utility that you need. Uh, but yeah, overall, not a bad card, especially for a free to play. The only thing is going to be the materials to virtual rebirth um, Vmon and Warmon. So, you know. Uh, not a bad thing to have, uh, but a little bit resource heavy, especially if you want to level up or virtual rebirth two copies so you can have fighter mode and dragon mode. I do think running dragon mode in a fighter mode team might be useful. So, you know, something to consider, but the amount of resources that you need to spend is going to be quite significant. Uh, but yeah, so let's. Next. Oh, it is an ultimate stage. I thought it might have been a nightmare stage. Just because usually nightmare stages are the last boss, which actually makes me wonder what is the nightmare stage going to be? Because you know, normally nightmare stages are the the last boss of or like the big, big, big bad, like the big boss of the series, right? And this guy was like, wait, this guy was the final boss of the movie. I guess the, it might be like an evolution to this guy, actually. Like the, 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 the one that looks like really, really ugly, brah, kind of guy. Either that or like maybe Miotismon. Oh, it actually might be Myotis, My Myotismon, the, the vampire dude. Uh, not his base form, but maybe his, like, uh, evolved form, his ultimate form. Ooh, that would be cool. 
that would be like you know if like um the base form is the boss but then you also like the nightmare stage you get to evolve him that would be cool but uh yeah i more resources Ugh. Ugh. anyways ultimate stage manifestation of dark side of power um apokalimon is going to come out He's dark demon of course run <laughs> run a hikari team on him and like kill him easy anyways for his active skill we have cd6 Ooh, wait cd6 effect clearer not bad um clear additional effects in play runestones possessed time tunnel and wait very very conditional very conditional effect honestly not a bad like this is a really good skill the fourth effect ignore that like that's nice that's nice but that's not gonna happen like the amount of black and white zones you come across it yeah no it's not gonna <laughs> it's not gonna be convenient for you to run this um for that specific scenario yeah black and white mm. uh that's yeah no but honestly the other three effects is actually really good um one clear all additional effects so this is amazing because you can clear effects such as the attack debuffs you can clear effects like if you have like a attribute block on the side uh, step damage um i don't know recovery lock things like that you can clear those effects and that's going to be really good um i guess you can clear your own effects but usually when you activate this is to get rid of enemy debuffs and that's really good especially at cd6 the fact that it also comes with a time tunnel and runestone possession effect cd6 that's amazing um uh, so definitely a card worth getting uh in my opinion uh dual max just one copy is fine you don't need two but you just need one copy and then the fourth effect if it happens it happens it's going to be super nice to get a times 10 attack bonus and deal damage regardless of fixed combo shield but again realistically black and white zones will not occur when you need them uh, and they're very situational so mm. uh, if it happens good but don't count it uh, but the first three effects holy shit that's a good utility card for any demon out there uh, demons don't really have that many time tunnels we have like north and like some others i think there's a fire demon that can do that but i think uh but i think um yeah cd6 time tunnel is really good so definitely worth getting this card uh but yeah so new chain battles we have uh machine Dramon and piedmon piedmon we're just facing him on an ultimate stage right now so the stage is going to be pretty similar uh and we already know what he does so now the only one left is machine Dramon, which is a dark machine uh dark machina which of course makes sense uh <laughs> cd6 skill tap two columns to explode them to generate enchanted runes of the member's attributes and race in each column upon each successful explosion deal a sniper damage regardless of defense for one round laser trap ignored and for each group of runestones dissolved character launches an extra fire attack to the max of five extra attacks honestly this skill is not bad it's not super broken but it's actually has some utility i think being able to explode two columns to um of your choice is really good especially cd6 pretty uh fast skill pretty standard skill and so cd6 for exploding two columns of your choice to generate attributes underneath the members it's really good if for example you're running a lilith team and you run out of water runes you can tap this skill choose lilith and then you will generate a column of water runes again if you need like earth runes you can tap um, the column below whatever right and it doesn't even have to be a makina it can be a random race so you can run them in a daji team or like a non mono makina like 
So you can run Needhog in a Lilith team, and you can still generate Earth runes underneath Needhog. And Machine Dramon is already giving you that, that extra Makina to reach uh, more Makina fuel, things like that. So honestly, not a bad skill. You also deal a Sniper damage, uh, which can help break Stealth Shield. Again, Snipers are very situational, and they usually only help break Stealth Shield. So if it happens, good. Typically, this sniper damage will not really deal that much, um, but it will help you break stealth shield at CD6, which is not bad. Uh, laser trap, that's that too, very situational. We don't really encounter laser traps that often, and even then, with a good time tunnel, you can basically ignore it. And then extra fire attack, extra damage, not nothing super good. I think his main utility will be there to help you explode those two uh, columns uh, for uh, these um, uh, for your team which is not bad um, which is it reminds me of uh, the EVA 13 which helps you explode two columns and that is pretty useful already uh, of course EVA has more EVA 13 has more utility but this is still a pretty good skill at CD6 we also have bonding skills which yeah yeah their bonding skills. Ooh, actually, what the? You're, huh? I. Sure. Of of all the cards I expected in the game, I did not expect uh, Ogremon to be one of the cards chosen for the collaboration, actually. Honestly, I thought maybe Wizardmon. Uh, yeah, Wizardmon is more. Uh, it's more iconic. The monkey, Etemon. The monkey dude is more iconic, uh, you know, so yeah, I did not expect this guy to be there, but yeah, Digimon Hunter, Ogremon, uh, yeah, you can get just an event mission, honestly, and then CD6, explode three columns on the right to generate uh, Beast Earth Runes and Beast Dark Runes, character attack increases by five, and characters' attack will be altered into dark. Honestly, eh. Again, exploding rules is nice, but CD6. I mean, CD6 is pretty good, but the amount of skills that you that he has is just okay. Uh, Earth Beast may have some utility in future Earth Beast uh, teams, but honestly, I do think his skill is a little bit weaker and has more like there's a lot of more cards that can replace him anyways so i wouldn't really count i mean i would still get him because it's a it's a good skill to have if you're if you don't have idea of what else to run just like a i need one extra beast member let's put him in um your attacks are changed into dark which might be good depending on whether the enemy has like a non-dark damage reduction but in that case actually in that case this could be useful like say for example you're running a mono earth team and you encounter a light enemy that only takes damage from dark attacks if you activate this thing not only do you get a dark attack but you also get a character bonus or team or attack character attack bonus of times five which can potentially help you kill that enemy so maybe maybe has some utility, but I still think um, it's a pretty underwhelming skill uh, in normal applications. Because like in normal applications, this dark attack won't really do much. At the times five will still be nice. So CD six for times five, eh, not bad, I guess, but also not super good. But yeah, uh, Leomon, when the character is triggered, and character skill CD minus one. Actually, oh wait, this is for Leomon, never mind. Uh, <laughs> I was like, if you could reduce this cooldown by, by one, maybe. But that's for Leomon, never mind. Uh, but yeah, actually, yeah, so honestly, a lot of things I did not expect. Uh, Apocalymon, I thought might have been a... Well, I didn't know he was going to be in the game until I saw the banner. The news banner. And then I was like, oh shit. It's going to happen. And potentially you're going to release 
Omnimon by the time they release this ultimate stage, maybe, I don't know. Uh, and then we have uh, Ogremon, which honestly, I had no idea they were gonna add him. I thought they would give like other cards that were more um, iconic, but I could be wrong. Uh, I don't know what else is coming for the fourth week, which is probably going to be the uh, the last week. Um, but yeah, so Machine Dramon, we knew that because we knew the four masters were here. And in Peral Dramon, we knew about the virtual rebirth because uh, when they announced Digimon, they did announce that they did add his name in one of the D3 team skills. So like here. And I was like, ah, yes, they're going to virtual rebirth in Peral Dramon. Cool. So that didn't catch me by surprise. In terms of leaders, they're actually not bad. Um, not good either, just okay. And as members, there might be some utility in the future. But uh, for light members, I do think maybe Imperial Drum on Dragon Mode has a better member skill than Fire Mode. But all in all, they're still pretty good, cool cards to get, honestly. I, I'm still going to get both. Just because one, I love Digimon, I love the artwork. But in terms of power level, I do think they're a little bit on the lower side. But it makes sense because they're free to play. Uh, but yeah. Cool, Virtual Rebirth. Yeah, that's all for this GNN Blind Review. Uh, I really apologize if you heard anything in the background. Apparently someone's doing construction out there and one, it's annoying me, but I really, really hope it does not translate to the video uh, too well. I do have a filter running, so hopefully that can help uh, mitigate the sounds that you're getting on that end. Um, but yeah. That's all for today. Thank you for joining me in another Blind GNN review. And as always, stay tuned on my YouTube channel for more Tower Saviors content. For now, stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you guys next time. Bye everyone!